On today's episode, we're announcing one of our biggest guests so far. We wonder why bus drivers are always so precious about number twos. Uh, Chris's fitness journey begins and uh, we get behind an Olympian who's absolutely stunning looking. Hello and welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch. Uh, got Chris Stark and uh, Sid's with me today. Um, how are we? You all right? Is yeah, okay? good. Really good. How are you guys? Good. Yeah. Good weekend? Good. Yeah, good weekend. Yeah, you yeah. come straight from the gym, Sid. Mm. So you have a little salad just before there as well. What are you uh, on the on the <laughs> fitness trail? <laughs> no, to be fair, I've seen this man since yeah. man in the gym a lot. He is well, uh, the, the thing is, if I what, if he's what shredding the gym, for, then he's at the gym. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. what's what's it for? I always get suspicious around this time because this just... is normally where people get the call up for. No, I'm a celebrity. Life. Oh really? Then, oh really? Yeah, oh, really? yeah oh. then they want to get fit for the jungle. I wish that was the case. Ooh. I wish I had something to gear up for. No, he's yeah. uh, to be honest, he is on it with 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 regards to fitness, uh, which brings me to. To you at the moment. Mm. Um, all good with you, fitness wise? All good. I can't remember if we've talked about this on the podcast, but. Um, <laughs> That's why I asked. But, um, <laughs> but you boys have been very supportive. <laughs> to me as, <laughs> as always. Um, no, I'll tell you what it was. I, uh, I was just feeling a bit shitty about myself. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I've now put on so much weight. I think it's largely from doing this podcast. And uh, and the fact I get up early every day. Anyway, I thought to myself, do you know what? I'm going to do something about it. So I thought I'll try get a bit fitter again. So back on the treadmill, doing my walking, Pete, on there, yeah. you know, to yeah. try. Okay. <laughs> I know you don't think it's effective at all, but you've got to start somewhere, haven't you're, you? You're and a walker. I'm walking and running right. in intervals. Yeah. Hit session, that is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. the hit session. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's get uh, to it. Now, no. the, the point... The, now, uh, listen, I'm, I'm, you're taking positive steps exactly which is fantastic taking positive steps I, I, do you know what and there's something in it when people say when people used to say exercise is good for your mental health I honestly I honestly thought it was just an arrogant fit person thing to say no it's, I totally agree with that that's, that's 100% correct it genuinely it's, makes you yeah. feel a bit better for yeah. the rest of the day My it's fucking issue. painful at the time yeah and I yeah. hate uh, before it I'm like I really don't want to do this but I do feel better afterwards my, my yeah. only issue is obviously you say exercise is um you know great mentally it's where you categorize walking you know what i mean like i i would class it as a mode of transport well we're gonna disagree <laughs> what, what, but what the point is if i say do 20 minutes one day and there's a bit of walking on there and then yeah. you know the idea is i'll improve and before too long i'll be you know, mm. in sort of the realms of sport that you might respect, being okay, two okay. athletes yourself. Okay. Listen, I, I, so, so what I'm saying is there's I a bit more you, of a focus. I think you can do more. That's what I'm saying. I think you can do, I think you can jog. Yeah, but great. And <laughs> I think you're, you're starting at the right place. Thank you. And, and I, honestly, you are, a, I know you, you do take the piss a lot, but you are very supportive lads. And anyway, I know you've been saying to me, good idea, try get a bit fitter. You know, especially when you watch, you've got to watch this podcast now. We never started videoing it, did we? Yeah. And it's, yeah, yeah I see some of the videos, I'm like, oh no. So um, I, I do want to get a bit fitter. So a bit of a healthier mind, trying to eat a bit better, mm -hmm. eat a bit less. Yep. I think that's part of it because believe it or not, if you eat less, you seem to put on less weight, uh, yeah. which has taken me a while to realise. <laughs> 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 so I was watching a video of someone saying that I was like that's genius actually Ooh. just smaller portions I, I think the main catalyst behind this is what your missus said she okay yeah. so then I'm trying to find other ways of getting fit and my missus I got quite a devastating message from my missus who's been really encouraging about this and she meant well by it but she said um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you thought about buying a slender tone <laughs> <laughs> so she said have you thought about buying or I'm thinking about... I can't remember. I can't remember if it was like, shall we buy... You showed shall, me. It, it was, shall, shall we, we buy... Yeah, shall we, yeah. But, but you see my missus, she's fit. She's like, she she has no use for a slender tone whatsoever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? She's... It's Doesn't me. It. It's yeah. me. What she's you saying is... You feel like she's saying, us oh, so throwing herself in that to, means but, you. But she's doing it to try to be nice to me. She doesn't need a slender tone. Does get me thinking though, boys. Isn't that... I don't know how these things work. My understanding is you can just wear wear it and then you're, well, the I mean, weight drops off. Yeah, I mean, I've seen Cristiano with, with these on, you know, and they're like, and he, he's got a great, he's got an eight pack, so it must work. So, so this is the belt that goes round and then sends the, like, pulses for your abdominals, yeah. muscles. It's supposed to tone you up, isn't it? 
So, so my it's, thinking it's a, is, is that not the answer to kind of the perfect, perfect equilibrium for people who do a podcast where we can both take in calories from the Guinness at the same time as we're burning them off mm. and talking. Genius. Mm. Like, why aren't pubs just fitted with slender tones? Yeah. A slender tone attached to the chair to or the, the stall. Yeah. Could you imagine just walking into a pub and then <laughs> before you get in there, they just sh- <laughs> shut you up? Yeah. So, <laughs> so maybe next podcast, if we they're should. listening, they can come in with the big money, three slender tones here. Um, we'll be... <laughs> So we're willing to uh, uh, to promote them. Uh, I just want to carry on with the conversation. So where did you go? What was your reply? Well, I didn't reply. I showed you boys the message. Yeah. It was like, this isn't a good sign when your wife starts suggesting oh, that you you know, the on. family should invest in a slender tone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mm. it's a devastating... Did you not say, did you not get my text? It's a devastating message to receive from your wife, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? Because you're trying to be nice. But look, you're taking positive steps. So I cheers am. to that. Yeah. Yeah, are they silent, them slender tones, are they? I mean, it would be well, interesting. I'll be honest with you, mate. It's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I've never really had one on. Let's say no more anyway, and okay. hopefully there'll just be progress over the next few weeks and months. Maybe next week you'll spot us in slender tones, but let's not make a big thing of it. Uh, okay, today's podcast, well, it's an interesting one because we've got an amazing guest who is booked to appear on this podcast, right? So what we wanted to do was kind of tee that up a little bit. I can't quite believe this is happening, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's mainly just a, a pod announcement, really. Like we uh, will have Eric Cantona on next week. That's huge. Um, How does it feel for you, boys? Well, oh, well, this is this is this is why we're kind of like chatting about kind of our memories of it because I, you know I'm not sure how long we're going to get with him, but mm. he's, he was. If I think if you had to pick a guest who's played football, like he'd be right up there at top table, oh. I think, to, to to have a conversation with someone who's just, it's like an enigma, isn't he? Like there's so many factors. Of, uh, although he played for Man United, I have mm. absolutely no allegiance for whatsoever. Yeah. I still respect him as a man, as a player, as a, as a character, as, you know, someone who's just been so kind of prevalent in that era of when football to me was like my life. Yeah. Mm. He was possibly the kind of best player at that time? I, I would say he was probably one of the first Mavericks mm. to probably come to the Premier League. You know, with that personality, the, the ego that he had as well, wasn't it? It was just... Well, it was right at the start of the Premier League as well, right? So it's like he won the kind of league with Leeds yeah. and then came over to Man United and that's when the Premier League started. And I think, you know, I'm trying to think what, what age I'd have been there. I'd have been 10 or 11. Well, 94, wasn't it? 92, 90, the, the Premier League. 93. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, I'd, I'd have been what twelve. It's like literally the perfect time to like just see a player yeah. and just think, and like even you know the way English players mm. were. Obviously, I'd, I'd grown up with that, and it was amazing. But then seeing this Frenchman with his collar up in these Nikes, yeah, I, I was like, even though. Like I say, no, no allegiance to Manchester United. In fact, I pretty much, I hated them. Mm. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> to see him like uh, and and just go, wow, mm. what is this? Yeah, I, I remember seeing him at Highbury when uh, I mean, obviously I was at Arsenal and we used to get tickets for the games. I was only young, so I was with my dad. So and it was when he first come, and it was when Man United and Arsenal was getting that sort of rivalry, not so sort of the Keen and Stat day, uh, days earlier than that, <clears throat> and. I remember getting our tickets um, and then going up to where the coach pulls in to where into the North Bank and the Arsenal bus was there. I remember the Arsenal bus coming, sorry, the United bus was coming down. I said to my dad, come, let's run, let's go and get up there. And we stood there and I looked up and Eric was on my side and he looked down, you know, like, you know when you catch someone's eye for the, like, like a footballer that you've never really spoke to or anyone in that ilk. And he looked down and he just gave me the nod and a wink like looking up and I was like, oh, look at my dad. I was like, did you see that? And wow. he was like, ah. and they just slowly pulled into the library. I was like, oh my God. It's just like everything he seemed to do was cool. Do you know it's what I mean? It? Just the way he held himself. He was a kind of an amazing character before a time where people acted as characters in football. Do you get what I mean? Like mm. this was a time before a lot of these commercial deals were were in the sport in the, in the same manner and way that they were you know, when you hear about how, how it was for Beckham and, and people like that. And yet he was this amazing 
massive character, huge presence, would be interesting to know how he was managed and how they did manage him from his mm. opinion. Well, that's, yeah. you know, that's something that I really, really want to ask him. But yeah. I remember um, Liam Gallagher telling the story and, you know, he appeared in one. Did a music video, did a music video, video yeah. right? Uh, I think it was one, the track, I think. And uh, it, 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 when Liam Gallagher explained of his situation, he was like, I'd love you to appear in my video. He's like, done. Like, I like the music and I'll, and I'll come over. And he said, right, so he said, what uh, flight, you know, do you want to get on? He said, get your people to call my people. He said, no, I'll book my own flight. And he said, well, what, when you arrive, do you need to pick it up from the airport? He said, I drive myself. <laughs> and he goes, wow. so what hotel do you, he said, I have a, I have a place. <laughs> like, and it's like, it's exactly how, what I, how I want him to be. Mm. Completely a mystery. So Liam Gallagher said, this fella just turned up, right? Of his, all of his, he got himself there completely. Had absolutely no dealings with anyone. They weren't even sure he was going to turn up. Turns up, acts. You've seen the music video, right? Yeah, Where he's walking yeah. around the house. It's unbelievable, right? It's he's walked, all around the house. He said he was doing this um, acting, did the whole thing, and then he was like the was he the driver when he at the end, I think, mm. did the whole thing, and then was like, see you later. And he said, I don't know where he fucking went. <laughs> just, just got off. Just no no nonsense. He said, there was no payment. There was no like organization of him getting there or anything. He just turned up and then he just and then he just went and he went, that's fucking oh, how shit. you want him, right? <laughs> do you know what we should do? We should we will obviously have a good chat with him, but we should just give him a load of quick fire questions and just let him just an opinion on each. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't mm. nothing float or anything. What do you think of barbecues? What do you think of the what do you think of that? And just go through it like that. Mm. Could be great. Yeah, he's cool, isn't he? And his song, so cool. song was fucking <clears throat> awesome as well, wasn't it? Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah, that was that was one of the first, wasn't it? That was... <laughs> so good. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna be a good one. This. You heard the story yeah. about where when Ryan Giggs came when he came to an end of season dinner and uh, he had no tie on. Have you heard that? So Ryan Giggs arrived no. first, and Alex Ferguson was like, you know. Get, a get your tie back on. So he had to go home, he had to go borrow a tie off someone. Then Eric walked in with no tie on and no one said anything. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, that's Ryan Giggs, you know what I mean? Like Ryan yeah. Giggs is an absolute like, genius as well. But it was like, just a case of managing, you know, that's the story that I heard, but it was like, mm. it's a case of managing, you know, him. Mm, because you guy. tell him, to go, it would have it, it things yeah. could have whereas yeah. Ryan Giggs you know, he's come from the youth team yeah it's just one of, I think you just got to manage him and I think that's obviously what they couldn't do in France mm. you know like obviously he was so much he had so much trouble that followed him around when he was playing he went to lots of different clubs in France yeah well I've told you about my, sort of the weird little link I, I have to him and you know this was obviously many many years ago and I was very very young but he sent my mum some cheese and it was very yeah. essentially be Eric's uh, yeah. son that's not true <laughs> so we have touched on this and it was it got a little bit I wouldn't say heated but it, it wasn't a nice yeah. he sent my mum some cheese and uh, he sent me a little autograph signed United team thing and on the back it said to my little English friend still got it in French Petit Ami or something or is that girlfriend <laughs> um, that would be weird Cantona sent me a sign to my little English girl. <laughs> This is a violation of so many different people, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear. But anyway, the picture the picture in the corner is stained with cheese. You can still see the sort of stain on it. And then it's weird because I saw pictures of him at someone's wedding and they did a guard of honour outside and he was like groomsman or best man or something. But they did the guard of honour with footballs. You know, like when oh, you wait outside the church and they come yeah. through. That is just mad link that, like... In it? I know I'm already joking, like, but, like, how does, that, how does it all come about that? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm sort of worried to bring it up. Yeah, I know, I know. But probably... <laughs> oh, really. I would be. <laughs> but, like, I genuinely actually... I'll, I'll to... I will text my mum before mm. and just say, look, I am speaking to him. Mm. Is, is, is there anything you want me to say? So what's going on? <laughs> you know. Be petty well, she poor. must know something. <laughs> <My petty laughs> That's peas. God knows. <laughs> I think you have to excuse my French. Really no, we're gonna we're gonna chat about Eric Cantona quite a lot this episode. And um, there's a bit of pod admin and loads of questions that have been sent in as well. Um, and very kindly, someone has sent us in a gift. I'm not totally sure what's going on. The guys haven't said we've got these boxes in mm. front of us. Um, 
I think it's something to do with the decoration of our pub, um, and they've sent us a few shirts. And I've got li- well, obviously, as you see, yeah, it's, it is a mystery. Uh, so. oh, well, these are great. They are do you know anything about these? No. So this it's a, it's a mystery. It's basically there could be any shirt in this box. So we've got a box from all mi- over the world they're called Mystery Jersey King. Mm-hmm. I, they're for the kids. The kids get them. So you literally like get them, and then uh, you open it, and it could be it's literally it could be anything. But a lot of them are retro shirts. Mm. It's quite good. Oh come on, let's open. Oh, them let's up do it. Let's see what it's Christmas there. Day. It's, it's exciting to get gifts though. Thank you very much, whoever sent these to us. That shirt. Oh, oh your Como. 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 That's where fabric yeah, is. Yeah, it? that's right. Yeah. Wow. This is the 2020, the 23-24 home Serie B Como shirt. That's fabric acid. Yeah. Dennis White is involved there, isn't it? He is, yeah. That's a lovely shirt. Very nice. What have you got, Sid? Yours looks cool. I've got, look at this. This is a New York Red Bulls uh, MLS 2023 third shirt. I mean, if you're listening to this right now and not watching and you know what these shirts are, that's very you, mate. That's decent. Did like, you wear, no, you wear that? Hip hop. Look, they, it's the notorious. It's eh? notorious. It's notorious. And it's got an ex- little explicit hip-hop, lyrics thing look. in the corner. She says hey, hip hop on it. Love that. That is amazing. I've just seen the badge decent. of mine, and I think I might win. Oh, it's really good. I have the Vanuatu. Oh, what international, international shirt. shirt. Oh my god. No Vanuatu shirt. Quite a simple affair, to be fair. It's not uh, black it's and right. yellow Watford. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watford colours. Um, good to get Vanuatu on, though. No? Amazing. We get that up. Yes, let's do that. Uh, Lovely idea. Right. So, Amazing. thank you very much for sending them, and um, obviously, feel free to send us more gifts, lads. I've got something I want to uh, bring up today, and um, you know, when you're playing, you always got really pally with the bus drivers, didn't you? Like they they're amazing what they do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but the bus driver at Liverpool ended up being a kit man, and he ended up staying there, Graham, for 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 years and years and years. Well, they do that, don't they? Surely it's yeah. a job that many have for many many years. Um, I saw the Watford bus reversing into Occupation Road in the last Watford game. Bear in mind, there's crowds of people. It's opposite a pub. It's a really tight turn to do it. I just thought that's. Impressive. Awesome. You know, we don't really talk about a the lot skill of fresh bus driver. That's so true. That. Imagine in front of all those football fans. Uh, the, like, imagine like <clears throat> how much grief he gets if he fucks it up. For the away bus turning up at another ground, yeah. right? You're full of players. You've got millions of yeah. pounds worth of cargo mm. there. And you're having to reverse off and up tight sort of little lanes. Yeah. So we should give a little shout to the bus drivers. We've not really celebrated them yeah. properly on well, this Well, there's podcast. some tight entrances out there to get <laughs> into. Where... <laughs> 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 Talk us through them, Sid. <laughs> Do you want to go through them? Or... Yeah, you... <laughs> Talk us through, Sid. Where's, White Hart um... Lane was especially back in so the day. White Hart... <laughs> so White Hart Lane, uh, I'm pretty sure I was on the Villa bus and the, the driver crashed into the entrance. Oh, really? Well, at Villa Park or White uh, No, at White Hart Lane. Yeah, I mean, that was, yeah. a, that was a very uh, yeah. particularly tight one. But uh, Change Upton, now. Upton Park. Yes. That was one of the tightest yeah, yeah, yeah. on the yeah, road to get into part. between the brick mm. pillared gates. Yeah, yeah. God, that was that was tight. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think that obviously the new stadiums now. Everton, oh, yes. Everton, Everton. So you know, down those roads. Yeah. Well, Everton, you get dropped off on the main road, don't you? And you go in like that way. Mm. But it's not just the team buses; it's the buses that take all the fans as well, turn up in a convoy, you know. I always think it's just quite oh, impressive you're everyone. what they do. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to play you this as well. So this is um, from one of the bus drivers uh, going to an away game. I just want you to have a look at this video. There's quite a lot going on. Um, but the driver gets angry. And I want to see what your thoughts are on this. Have a listen. So let me explain. So this is a coach full of... I'm not Sheffield even... Sorry, I think fans. it's Sheffield Wednesday fans. And basically, uh, the driver's not happy because someone's gone and had a shit in the toilet. Oh, man. Mm. That's a, that's a but bad my question thing. to you, boys, are you allowed to do that on the team buses? 
That's I, I. I'll be honest with you. I don't think I've, I think I've only ever seen that once, and someone did it to to, to wind everyone up. Left it in there. Was it you? No, <laughs> no. I, I've, ne- I, I've never seen anyone have an I've actual never shit. Seen having, <laughs> someone having a shit in there. But then my question is, why is the toilet there? And why do oh, bus drivers get yeah. so precious about having I, a shit I in the toilet? I think it's out of respect. I don't think you should should have a shit it, on a bus. Well, I, I, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, from from my uh, understanding is. When you shit, it just obviously goes into like a box or like a it's holding a toilet, underneath. Though. It's like yeah, but it doesn't flush. It doesn't go out. It holds, doesn't it? No, you flush it. No, no, I know you flush it, but where it, when it goes, it, goes it doesn't just. Tank, it doesn't right? go yeah, into go, a tank. Yeah, but yeah, then that's whatever. Yeah, but that smells like it, it, the coach. It would be horrendous. I don't know. I think like surely on a modern coach now, you go to the toilet. You should be. You should be fine, shouldn't you? And the way, but drivers get upset, like as if it's as if you've done something wrong. Yeah, Have yeah. listened to this again. Wow. It's the way he just goes, uh, <laughs> puts the music back on and go, let's crack on. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> he just wants to know who done it. Uh, yeah, but like, I mean, all the, I mean, how many buses have we been on in our lives, right? I'm not joking. Like, from the, the beginning, in the youth team days, you know, mini buses to then, you know, the the the, the Ellison's buses are just by the end are, are unbelievable. But yeah. they still only have a tiny little toilet. Yeah, the toilets haven't changed, have they? Everything else has the, the same, same toilet. The kitchen on the back, <laughs> but it's the same toilet. I know. Like you think about some of the. By the end, I'm not joking. There was a there was a big round table at the back. The music, Sky Sports mm. on. You know, leather armchairs, tables with um, drinks holders, and su- I mean, it, it, it amazing buses. But yeah. the toilets have not have not evolved. Yeah, it's weird that, isn't it? I just wasn't sure if it was different between, say, the team buses you're on. It just seems to be something that unites all bus drivers who are incredible at their job. They can squeeze into any tight end, at any <laughs> bit of the, you know, can't they, Sid? <laughs> well, but, let me ask you a question. Yeah, if you was on an away day with Watford, yeah, and you on a, with the fans, and you needed to. Go for shit. Would you go for shit? Because yes, it's a toilet. You, I just don't would you understand you don't that. Feel, like, though, would you not feel when you come out there, you right? Do that. And everyone knows that you've been in, because everyone can see you go in and, and hasn't seen you come out for 20 minutes, right? So would you not come out and like, when everyone's like either cheering you or you definitely get cheered or buzzed off. Yeah, but you just have to, hu- yeah, but that's fine. You'd because everyone- be totally comfortable. Yep, yeah, shit, just out of shit. Yeah, but no, no one cheers. Problem. Like if I go downstairs now, if I go to the toilet, Right? Yeah, but, yeah, but and I, someone else is waiting to oh. to kind of come in. They're not going to cheer me as I come out, are they? <laughs> yeah, because they're on their own. But if there's a group of a team of lads, a yeah. team of football players, yeah, bevied up as well. What I'm saying is, why don't we just normalise having a shit on a bus? Why why is it treated like? I don't oh, think we should though. No, no I, disagree, I disagree because I think you got to have, you got to have respect for your fellow passengers. A driver was going to turn around the bus for someone having a shit <laughs> in the toilet <laughs> of everything that's going on on that bus. Someone having a oh. shit. And it sounds like yeah, that wasn't a first warning. That was thin ice. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I know oh. where you're coming from. It's a function that we all do, right? So, like, why is that? It's not, a, you know, it's not as if they're having a fight or, no. you know, there's some if sort of... Harlem bangs one out in the... Um, <laughs> uh, and by that, I mean a shit, yeah. obviously. In the coach toilet is the driver going on and going, right, I'm no, warning you, you knows. do that again, I'm <laughs> dropping you in fucking Lincoln. <laughs> can you imagine that same driver drives Man City? I really want to know who that Harlem. driver is, by yeah, the way. No, if, that, you... if he's a regular, by the way, he's quite good in how he does his announcements in between music. <laughs> yeah, he's like, like a DJ. Why don't, we get him a, why don't we get him a gig? <laughs> See if we can get him a kick. He'll do Crouch Fest. He'll do New Year's Eve or something. Oh, right, so anyone else shit that bog? <laughs> Bangs a tune back in. Hey, he'll be on Wembley Way before you know it. Yeah, he will. You're right. <laughs> hey, get, someone get him a DJ gig. God well, sake. one, you get, get let him. us know who it is. Someone get a photo with that bus. If, if you know the bus driver, if he's a regular to games, please get in touch. We'd love to make contact with him. And, you know, let's see where this can go. Because... Yeah. I've actually DJed the toilets of um, in that club in Ibiza in High. I've been in those yeah. toilets, yeah. Yeah, so maybe we can get him into the toilets in Ibiza this summer. That would be. <laughs> well, <laughs> can you imagine that? Who's had a shit in that toilet? <laughs> Who's had a shit in that one? <laughs>
I've got straight back to fucking Lincoln. <laughs> Put the tune back on it. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, this is a little bit of a call to arms. I've realised that uh, Ben Foster is a goalkeeper uh, and he's got more subscribers than us. Um, on YouTube, it's an absolute disgrace really. We're, we're planning on being as big as Mr Beast. Um, and if you haven't uh, subscribed, then you're a Carl. Uh, and I can't condone that. So please get in touch, hit subscribe, um, and make us as big as Mr. Beast, or at least bigger than Foster. There's been a few Don't random we... things on um, that we've been sent in this week. Pete, do you want to discuss what, what uh, this whole Olympics well, is? This is Crouch at the Olympics. Uh, loads of fans have been tagging us into this video. Uh, it's Team GB posted on Instagram of Peter Crouch look like table tennis athlete Liam Pitchford. Uh, I've had this fella before, and I'll be honest with you, that picture of him that we're seeing here isn't actually kind of the picture that you know, he looks like me massively. Um, I, I've got some... Look at these. He does look like, like you. When he, this is when I was younger. I, I do get yeah. it. He does, he does, he does I, look I, like I've, me. Yeah, I've seen this. Uh, it's a belt. It is good, <laughs> yeah. And good. I, I get tagged in a lot with him. Um so I think we should get behind Liam this year. And I was thinking about along the lines of, you know, he could be our podcast go-to at the, the Olympics, you know? And I think if we all got behind him as a podcast, he might he might bring it home. Yeah, well, you're going to be tagged a lot. I mean, I assume if it's the Olympics, he's going to be seen quite a lot. So you're going to be tagged. So we might as well embrace him. He can be our guy. He can be the Peter Crouch. You never did the Olympics, did you? No. no. Did you? Did, did, did you fan, what, no? Uh, well, Didn't fancy it? Couldn't compete. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't because anything to do with the football. Olympics. Uh, football was yeah, but now I was. Uh, there was a period. The, the, the 2012 was yeah, at the was team. Was Bellamy gigs? Was a few. Yeah. Did you get asked? I don't know. I did. Oh. Funny gig that though, isn't it? Strange Funny call up. Well, the Brazilians take it really, really seriously. You know, yeah. like all the top players going there. You know, they. I, I don't understand why it doesn't have that. Why don't we take all our best players? Well, I, mean, I, I did hear a story, I think it was Michael Richards talking about being at the Olympics mm. and just being young and you're surrounded, you're in the Olympic village then, aren't you? And just everyone's Every, fit. Wow. Everyone I spoke to, I think I, uh, I'm trying to think where I was, but I, I remember speaking to some of the players that went and, and, they, and they loved it as an experience. Amazing surely, experience. Surely they wasn't in the mix. Would they have been in, in, the, in, the, in the village? Yeah, yeah. They, were, they, were, were they were in the village. Yeah, yeah it was full on, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Sid's is interested now. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost as massive as puddings, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> There's, you can see the realisation. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Uh, 2012. Where was I in 2012? Um, let's give you on, Liam. Let's, so let's so what are you thinking him. then? He's obviously going to be some kind of ambassador wise... At the Olympics well, I, for I'd, the like, pod. I'd like him to be our podcast ambassador, right? At and I don't Olympics. know, I don't think you're allowed to sponsor people at the Olympics, are you? But we could try. Like, I was thinking, do you remember when Beats did that thing where you couldn't, um, you couldn't sponsor anyone, mm. but they got like a lo load of headphones on the swimmers and stuff like that, yeah, and the runners, yeah, yeah. and they all had them on. Could we get some headphones on Liam? Pete's. Pete's. <laughs> By Andre Mariner. By Andre Mariner. There you go. There. Pete's, Pete's by Dre Mariner. <laughs> yes. This is genius. So, yeah, he's kind of passing the pod, but there's no official sort yeah, of Yeah, so when he, when he rocks up to, to the table tennis tournament, he's got the Pete's. Yeah, that's um, brilliant. He's got the Pete's on. Pete's so what are we imagining? Yeah. Headphones. Just some headphones. And a little P. And a little P on the side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then hopefully a little endorsement from Dre, Dre Mariner. Will you give him the blessing to do the robot as well? Yeah, I, well, I'd love him to. But imagine, like, we, if we get behind him, if the country gets, well, everyone on the podcast that listens to this podcast gets behind him, he could he could bring home a gold medal. Yeah, and then come on and show us his gold medal, and we say we would we were with oh, you yeah. from the start. Yes, how? Because he's like your doppelganger. He should kind of live your life as well. So, what if he wins gold? Why does he? Can he have your wife for a bit? Or something? <laughs> like, what, what, like, what? I don't know. No, that was good. <laughs> I'm just saying, if he's living the full Peter Crouch, um, that's some character. That's some character. It's worth an ask. I feel like uh, Richard Gear. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Woody Harrelson. Was it? Was it yeah. Woody Harrelson. Yeah. What's the? Uh, 
Oh, what, yeah, no, Woody, no, that yeah. was... Uh, a decent yeah, proposal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Woody Harrelson. <laughs> yeah, Demi Moore. Demi Moore. Yeah, Demi Woody Moore. Harrelson. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, well, I, 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 I'm not going to... I'm not going to... I'm not going to say yes. It's not really... It's not kind of really up to me. No, but you, yeah, you but, don't, you'd be the one to ask. Uh, well, I... Uh, Let's just let's just hope he wins. <laughs> <laughs> if he wins gold now, it's massive. But um, also, we're assuming Liam here. Like, I, Liam, you might be happily married yourself, and like, you know, I'm assuming we're assuming a lot. From this Why does this have to be the thing? Oh, you, they just come on. <laughs> well, because he could do that on any podcast, couldn't he? <laughs> like, it's more fun if you if it gets your wife. There's a lot of jeopardy on that. Though. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of jeopardy on it. Okay. Um, I'm only joking, by the way, before someone fires up and starts going, like, can't promise other people's wives, obviously. Fucking hell. Like, you just know someone's going to take offence. No, no, this is outrageous. Someone's going to write it and go, this, you know, that was outrageous. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't promise your wife to. No, obviously not. <laughs> but it would be funny if she's up for it. It would be very funny, yeah. Well, it would also be fucking <laughs> pretty devastating if she's up for it. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great looking lad though to oh, be fair yeah. he's a good, good looking lad isn't he come on Liam yeah. team GB come on Liam let's go bring it home alright back on Cantona what um, what's your favourite moment oh, from him well you know the the kung fu kick will obviously always be iconic I wouldn't say it's my favourite but it is iconic some, some moment though isn't it? yeah I mean how bad was that I, yeah. do you know what it's one of the moments where I knew I, I'd know where I, I was training at Arsenal and I got back and it was on the news, news at 10. Yeah. Because obviously it was after the game and it was like, Eric Cantona has done this. And I was like, because <gasps> I hadn't seen anything like that before. But like back in the olden days when there was <clears throat> punches thrown, I'd never seen something we, else quite yeah, yeah. Well, nuts I've seen as it that. I've seen it in the stands yeah, but and not, I've seen it on the pitch. Yeah. But, ne but never... Never both. Never crossed. <laughs> it's never crossed over. Not, not, that, not that I'd seen before. Mm. So yeah, that was, I mean, that was... But you know what, like, I don't know, as footballers, you're expected to kind of, kind of just take it. You know, he's just gone, for, I'm not taking it. No. It's just, you know, you think about what, you know, the fellow was saying to him, just obviously, and he's just like, I'm not having it. I mean, it is one of my favourite moments because, as you say, it is iconic. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't mean you endorse just going and no. two-footing someone in the think, crowd. Like, with, but I don't, the thing with him, like, I don't know where he's gone for the, like, he's over an advertising hoarding. That, yeah. you know, so to go for with the, with the kick over, he's not worried about the landing at all, is he? But then he has landed and he's bounced yeah. straight back up and got yeah. in with the right punches. He's got in with the right hook and that was a powerful one as well. Yeah. I mean, but it's but like you leading with a scissor kick, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like going in with the, it wouldn't be my first initial thought. Well, to what go would in be your kick. choice of... Um, well, I, I've got quite a long arm. Assaulting um, a I member think, in the crowd. Uh, yeah, I, I would, we don't condone this, obviously, but I would, I think I'd just, I'd just throw a linguine in there. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a random linguine, and he couldn't get in here near me, and I'll be I'll be down the tunnel. Steve, uh, uh, oh, attack of choice. Yeah. How would you attack a fan? Probably head straight on. Oh really? Yeah, head straight in. Yeah. Yeah, Probably. I mean, listen, I don't know. It's heat at the moment, ages, isn't it? You know, yeah. Dark ages, but... Yeah. But that, that incident, of he, he had quite a big band, wasn't it? Mm, Six, pads. eight months, was it? Something like that. And I remember the comeback game against yeah, Liverpool. Liverpool, yeah. Mm. That was unbelievable. At Old Trafford with the penalty and then the celebration around the pole. Around the back of the goal, yeah. The well, end, yeah. celebrations but, alone are iconic, yeah. but the sheer sort of... It's not even confidence, is it? It's just like... Arrogance. Been arrog it is arrogance. Well, in yeah, it, the, 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 my my moment to stand where I was when he, I think it was Sunderland, where yeah. he scored the chip, and then he turned, and then he just turned, and his collar was up, and he just oh. kind of like it was like a it was like a gladiator. You know, in, yeah. in, in, are you not entertained? Yeah, like that moment in Gladiator where Russell Crowe's like, are you not entertained? Yeah. It's literally like he scored one of the best goals we've ever seen. It is kind of like again, not a United fan, right? But it literally makes the hairs on because. Just someone so, such a genius. Just, you got to appreciate it as a football fan. Um, the, the little bit of skill and then the, the or, like the audacious chip. And then they just look round as if like, yeah. how good am I? Yeah. Just makes you think, wow, you know, I'd love to be able to kind of, you know, to get to yeah, that level and score a goal well, like that. The collar was up and yeah. he just turned around and he's like, at Old Trafford, like. Bellingham I mean, gave him a bit of that not too long ago. Yeah. And you've got, I mean, you've got to be a certain player, haven't you, of a certain well, you, standard yeah, to yeah. be able to... It seems to be like a little trademark now of Bellingham. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's it. The arms out. But they, <clears throat> when Eric done it, it was, especially Old Trafford then, Theatre of Dreams, it was... It's just so good. Do you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. just being able to do that. Like at Old Trafford with, you know, Man United were the best team in the land for, throughout that period. And it felt like he was the best player on the biggest stage doing that, scoring a goal like that, like an unbelievable goal. And then just, I mean, if, if I score a goal like that at Old Trafford, I'm, I'm, I'm running, mm. right? And I'm probably doing something that I'll regret. To be able to have the calmness to like, this is what I do. Well, that's it. It's almost like his heartbeat, it was like a resting heart. Like his heartbeat hasn't increased yeah. because of the goal. But I also think there's like, I know, you know, there's this with, with Frenchmen in general, right? David, I played with David Ginola at, at, at Tottenham and I got, I remember getting into the first team. I wasn't in the first team, but I was training with the first mm. team, right? And I went over, usually when they were a man short or something, right? <laughs> so I'm like 17, 18 and I get over and I train with all these top players and I remember doing shooting after with Ginola and there was probably three of us or four of us, two from the youth team, David Ginola, and I can't remember who the other first team player was. But you know when you clip it from the side and um, you take a touch and then you finish, yeah. right? We used to do it every day after training. And uh, I'll be like, I'll like, just get on my toes, like ready. And he's like, oh, whoa. So what is this? <laughs> I'm like, why are, you, why are you jumping like this? And I said, well, I'm getting, re I'm getting ready for the, for the path. And he's like, no, no, no. He watch me. And he like, he like put me to the side. I'm not joking. He just stood there like that, right? And it wasn't on his toes at all. They fired a ball at him. He just killed it instantly, right? And then he just bent it in the top <laughs> corner. And he went, relax. <laughs> went, Fucking hell. Like, oh, was Did I? you have to do the next one? <laughs> yeah, so then I'm doing the next one. <laughs> Tell me you was on your toes again. <laughs> so I'm like, so then I've got to pretend to be like David Ginola. So I've gone, right. Oh, I've just I've got to a deep breath. I've had a touch. The touch has gone all right. And then I've put it straight to keep his arms. <laughs> and, um, and I was like, just uh, like, just, how cool is this fella? Man. You know, to, and, it, and I put him you know, on a level with, with Eric Cantor. And I like, he was a genius, mm. you know, like, you know, but he wasn't winning league titles every, every week. So do you, so every year, obviously we're joking a bit when we say it's a particularly French, potentially characteristic trait, mm. whatever you want to call it, mm. way of dealing with those situations. Steve, what about you? Did you see that from, I mean, you obviously had a load of French players at Arsenal. Arsenal. Did you did you see <coughs> that sort of thing a bit, a, bit, a bit of that. That, that sort yeah. of slightly that calm. Quoi. Yeah, that calm, yeah. Confident, arrogant, like... God, Henri. Masters I mean, some of, of their craft. Yeah. Henri, but, how many times did, uh, at Highbury you watch him do like that celebration where he's like dead, really serious, yeah. kind of like that yeah. knee slide, I remember. Yeah, they was, they was always... Yeah, you're right, actually. They was quite laid back. Mm. You know, they was... The one thing I remember about them, they was... And like Eric and Janola, they were men. They were big men, wasn't they? Like Manu Petit, Arsenal, Vieira, Thierry. Like they, you looked at them and they were like Strong. big, yeah. big guys. Um, yeah, they was. They, you're right, actually. Now looking at that, they was in the in the big moments. They kept their cool, and they was just cool all the time yeah. as well. Yeah. I'm like, with with David, I always remember like he, he couldn't couldn't understand why I was obviously I'm a young kind of kid that just yeah. I'm just so hungry to be there. And it's just the way he was like like, like he thought I was mad. What are you doing? We we Relax. say we say about like them being cool as well, but what about some of his quotes? Cause I mean that was an iconic quote, wasn't it? Seagull in the trawler. Mm. I mean, it threw me. It threw me enough. I, I, with him, I was thinking you, you you set yourself up for like for like a fall, but then you know I think there's something special about someone who says something and then backs it up. Yeah, you know if you say you're the best and then are, it makes you it puts you on a different so on, right. on not, a different level. It's not even just about the quote, is it? It's about the person who says it. Because back it up. If Cantona said half the stuff, say Ian Holloway said, yeah. all of those would be seen as legendary quotes, you know, as well. It's true. Well, Although some of his quotes are legendary. Yeah, yeah. But that's it. Like, if I, if I come back, right, and I've, I've been banned, right, and I come back from a band and I I play the next game and I've said, the seagull you know, follows well, when, the trawler. Yeah, when the seagulls follow the trawler, it is because they think 
sardines will be thrown into the sea. Right. Yeah. And everyone like right, I, I everyone go, well, I, that, that, I come back and everyone goes, shut up, you can't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck off, well, you with all this bollocks. What the fuck's he talking about? Whereas he obviously can get away with it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't think anyone in that dressing room said to him, asked him what it meant. I think they were just like, you're spot on. But even even the, the, the Nike advert, right? Remember the Nike <sighs> advert, right? Where he puts his collars up at the end and he puts the um, keeper through, mm. the, through the net, or yeah. the, dev, the devil through the net. Yeah. Do you remember the players in that, in that advert... Like Ronaldo, is Ian Wright in this? Yeah, you you think of the, the players in it. You got like Ronaldo, Maldini, um, Ian Wright was in it. There was there was like so many top top players in, yeah. and he's the one that finishes it. Yeah, like he's a mate, an amazing fella. Mm. I thought what we could do next is watch a couple of Cantona's goals. Oh. Since you were telling me all about the little tricks to being co-coms and punditry yeah. and all of that, yeah. I can learn from the masters here today. So, so basically, this, this is this is you're going to say Sid is going to do the co-commentary. I'll, I'll do so. I'll do the commentary to lead him in. Yeah. Okay, okay. Cool. But I think it's just also it's just quite interesting seeing both of your take on amazing Cantona goals. Well, oh. it won't. This is this is. I'm going to do this as live. Oh, so, you, you're yeah, going yeah, in yeah. live. Okay. Even better. Uh, so this is uh, United against Arsenal. Ince stands over the ball. Cantona! What a goal that is! Venom in the strike from Cantona. Seaman, no chance. Well, these big games bring big moments and from special players, and we've certainly seen it here for Merrick Cantona. They work it really well. Ince just plays the ball wide of the Arsenal wall and then it's down to Cantona. Can he get the strike? He certainly can. Seaman sees it all the way, but because the sheer velocity of the strike, it's past him in a flash and it's in the back of the net in the Stretford end. It's 1-0 United. Unbelievable scenes here at Old Trafford. Cantona on his revival. <laughs> it's just incredible. Okay, got uh, uh, some messages here. Um, message here from Carl. He says, first of all, sorry about the name. Um, here's Carl with a K. Um, <laughs> Played my dad, Ian, um, wow. who we tried to save years ago. Uh, not sure he's the youngest ever Ian, though. Uh, just watched the England footage of Crouchy scoring his first ever England goal. And he has the number 21 on the front of the shirt. But the number 12 on the back, did you realise this at the time? Or was the shirt printer trying to do a shirt whilst looking in the mirror? That's not true. <laughs> That's is that real? Do you not know that? No. I've got a shirt at home, kept it. Yeah, yeah. The kit man has had a nightmare and he's obviously sent me on, but then realised that, <laughs> I think it was 21 on the back on 12 on the front or something. But he, he he's obviously gone, please don't fucking, <laughs> when he's seen me go on, he's gone, oh, bollocks. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I hope no one notices this. And then I scored my first ever England goal um, at Anfield against Uruguay. And uh, obviously, then it goes everywhere. No. And they had loads of newspapers. Next day, they were trying to buy it. Um, they offered a lot of money. They were going to give it to charity and stuff like that. And uh, in the end, I, I just said, you know what? I just want to keep it because it's like... Yeah. I didn't even know that. No, yeah, I didn't even man, know. Man. So is that the one where, obviously, number on the back is normal? Yeah. And then, is it, was it where was it on, on there? On the front. Oh, because normally it's in the middle sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, no, on the side. On yeah. the side. So I had a number, I think it might be 21 and 12 on the back. Yeah, it was what a, a balls up. It was a massive balls up, yeah. And yeah, no, it was a mad one. I've kept the shirt, I've still got it. That's probably like the most iconic shirt. It's my first ever England goal. And obviously it's wrong, completely What time wrong. did you come on? Um, I came on, because I remember Beckham and Rooney came off. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't have no idea when I, what time I came on. But the Joe Cole crossed man. it. And, yeah. Paul Kitman must have been there just going, oh, oh God, don't, don't score. score. Beckham don't, yeah, score. Tom, Tom, I don't remember. Score. Great, great top man, Tom, as well. Oh. He was like, you absolutely stitched me there by scoring. That's happened before. Beckham's, <laughs> he's come on before and his name was not spelt right. Spelt, yeah. I think I was playing that time as well. Oh, Tom was good, though. It's Tom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no>, we're digging <laughs> Tom out. Oh, no. Maybe to see you, top man. Yeah. I just like I'd never heard of it going wrong like that. Like yeah. to print I it never up. knew your one. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Good, well, man. well spotted. So well, well done, Carl. That, yeah, that yeah. answers Hold your it question. Up for all Carl's with a K with a great yeah. message. <laughs> yeah, message from Matt. 
Uh, what are Sid's and Crouch's views on changing ends before kickoff? I've noticed this multiple times now, i.e. at Anfield, the opposition team taking it upon themselves to kick to the cop end for the second half. Um, is this in the manager's decision for the pre-game or is it something that the players decide on the pitch? It feels like the ultimate shithousery to see a goalkeeper having to run the whole length of the pitch to swap sides. Yeah, this is a this is a strange this is a mad one, isn't it? Well, like the there's definitely a routine, isn't there? Like, the certain places like Newcastle, they want to go down mm. down down that hill, isn't it? In this second my, half, my, my view of it, my view of it is you 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 want to shoot towards your prominent end in the second, second half. half. Mm. That's the way I yeah. and I think obviously a away team would shit house you and make you do it in the first half. Mm. That's the way I've always seen but it. They normally yeah. allow it. The away team normally just go along with things, don't they? Mm, unless they're yeah. shithouses, you know what I mean? But, but no, often if you have, I've always thought if you have a player from your team that has crossed over to the other team, they'll say, switch it up. Like if we get if we get to choose, switch them up the other way because they always do quite well against their own team. But actually that's just common sense, isn't mm. it? So why don't more teams insist on switching ends. Like, you don't see it all that much. You don't see much. it as much, no. yeah, that's as much. No, I don't think there's less shithousering going on now. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, definitely, not a, it's definitely, it? definitely not a player's decision. If anything, it would have been, it would be a manager's decision. Well, you've been a captain, right? Like, well, when you've been a captain... It would always come down to the manager. Yeah? The, I think so, yeah. The manager, would, and that would be in the, the Friday talk or, the, or before the game. They'll go, listen, we're going to change this up. If you win Put the toss, there, right? Sink. So, so you do the toss... Yeah. You think, is it... Whoever wins a toss... You're choosing whether you... Pick ends. Are you picking ends? Yeah. Or choosing whether to uh, start the game? No, yeah. So if you win the toss, yeah. you choose what end you... you yeah. And so, then, so if you flip the, t the coin yeah. and I win, I'll go, we'll stay here. And then it'll go, it's I'm just surprised it doesn't switch more then. If it's an advantage... Because it's an advantage to the away team to make you less comfortable yeah, exactly. as a home right, team. Yeah, yeah. So I'm surprised that it doesn't happen more. Yeah, because yeah. if you want to start this end... Well, like, we'll change that. Yeah. Make you not do that. Maybe they, everyone's just forgotten. Do you know what it seems like <laughs> now? It seems like oblig obligatory. You never um, know, mate. That both captains just go up and they might as well just go, we'll just stay each other's ends and who wants to kick off? Yeah. There's no point in even asking who wants to change ends now because no one ever does really, do they? What I found, like, when I played, you'd always have a mate with you taking kick off. Like, I, I didn't really kick off. I've done loads of kickoffs in my in my life. What do you mean? Well, but you've never uh, now you have one player who passed it back. Yeah, what, they've done you, away with the old two. It, it used, used to be two. Go, well, yeah. the ball you had to had to go forward into yeah. their half. Yeah. Uh, was, was, hang on, is that rule gone now? No. Yes, that rule. Yeah, no, you yeah, don't you have can, to go forward. Yeah. No, so can, that's why you have one player. Back, yeah, you it can, back. You can yeah. go You can sh you can Ooh. shoot straight away. Yeah. The ball doesn't have to touch. You can literally just. Yeah. But okay, that's that's obviously still going forward though, isn't it? But now it does. It can go straight back. So what are you tossing? What, what are we suspicious here? What are you tossing for? You're tossing to be able to do choose both ends. We need a referee here, don't we? I think just I'm, fucking I, I, message I, I, Mike I, Dean. I'm seeing, I'm seeing Mike Dean tomorrow. Just send him a voice note. Just say what we're we tossing for. I'm doing Sky tomorrow. I'm seeing Mike Dean. I'll do. It. I'll ask him. Yeah, I look, yeah. The, the, obviously, the FIFA rules of the game, the team that wins the toss decides which goal it will attack in the first half of the match. Why is no one changing halves then? Why are they not doing it enough? That's what I want to know. What advantage are you getting by not changing half if you're an away team that wins the toss? I can't see any, really. You're just playing to the... Yeah, you're just roughing the feathers. You're just parching the crowd. Mm. Mate, what are we saying? You want to bring bring it back? Um, well, yeah, I just think like what, or just get to the bottom of why it's up. You ask Mike Dean tomorrow. Then L let me ask you a question. As a fan at Watford, when you go there, yeah, if that happens, would you go? Oh, for fuck's sake! Yeah, it's really annoying for the fans because yeah. it means the second half, you know, where it, it is all yeah. to play for. You're watching. Yeah, your team are attacking a goal yeah. on the Miles directly away, yeah. opposite. Exactly. It's an annoying watch. It's like you want to be able to stand up for the corners and things, don't you? Mm. you can, it's all a bit distant and... Yeah. Do you know my thing that you changed football for me since you said it and really was kind of ruined football, a large part of football for me, mm. um, was when you pointed out how few goals are scored from a corner. So yeah. why do we stand oh, really? up? Yeah. Yeah. The stats are... It's really ruined it for yeah. me. Because I love that noise of all oh, the chairs going like... Yeah. Yeah. All the chairs going yeah. up, yeah, yeah. And every time I think... It's a really rare occurrence. No one's scoring. 
<laughs> really ruined it for me. Yeah, sorry, mate. Yeah, actually, statistically, short corners are more um, are, are mm. more beneficial goal wise. Are they? Yeah. Which but is it's so hard if you're in ninety minutes, you don't want a player to. Or it you, doesn't seem everyone right. Everyone boos that. it. You boo it. Everyone boos it, don't they? And also, the reason for that is because when you do take a short one like that, <clears throat> it's still really a corner. It's not classed as a mm. as a corner. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Even if you move it, that's it, and then take it. You know, if you pass it to someone who then whips it in and you score, I don't think that's classed as like a. Mm. Is that still classed as a set piece? Oh, that's a good point. You know what I mean? What if it's an open play? If if you've got the corner yeah. and and you take it short, short, yes, yeah, and, and he and whips then it in, in. Yeah, no. that's not a set piece, or uh, is it a set piece? No, that that will that will be classes open. Open play. So the second that the corner has been passed, yeah. it's the move over, right? Because should, should, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you who's done this. Uh, Luke Williams, who was manager of Notts County, he done a big, uh, a big um, interview on this about people saying, why do we not put it in the boxing corners? He said, because this is why. And he said, we take a short corner because we, we score from open play. Yeah, but is this not the same as the whole like goalkeeper playing it out from the back? Because I can't bear to watch it, especially at Watford. Yeah, yeah. What players who aren't good enough to play out from the back play out from the back? Yeah, because that's the way to play. Because statistically, it's well, I, I, for me. It's I, I, it, it does anger me about football. It's, it's a, so it's a dangerous, bit, man. It's a bit like, like barbecuing for me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, it, it's become like a thing where you have to play out, and and I get it at kids' football and all that. But like when there's games matter and they're on the line, and you've got a centre half who can't play playing out from the back because it's the best because that's the, the way to play now but but football does adapt by bringing in rules to keep the game exciting you know so the substitutes one for example you can't time waste or it's not as easy to time where you, you, you've got um, because you know you're off for 30 seconds at that point all these things are brought in to help try keep the game going keep it exciting you making this devastating statement about corners in that really statistically you need to go slightly more boring way around of doing it in the 90th minute what do we then need to introduce as a law to balance I, I just say that maybe I, I when there's a that. corner the other team has to lose a player for 30 seconds do you see what I mean yeah to make corners throw it in the mixer yeah you're allowed, you, you have to keep one person unmarked <laughs> <laughs> At all times. Let's make corners great pick, again. Pick one. <laughs> well, I, listen, I'm with you. I like I like swinging them in inside yeah. and out. Like just swing them in for me, I, especially for me as a player. Yeah. I don't want a short little set piece. Do well, I? That's why the yeah, stats more thing doesn't score. work. My yeah. stats of, of scoring will be much higher exactly. if, we, if we get it in. Exactly. So this no, you can't apply these same rules to everything. And yeah, that, that's the point, isn't it? It's going to vary from striker to striker. What is more effective and position of maximum opportunity yeah. is in the box you know like so the more you get the ball in the box the more chance effectively you've got of scoring mm. but I think there are ways into the box where you, it's all kind of more controlled isn't it if you if you pass it into the box I also think the stats probably aren't helped by corner takers who just can't seem to be able to get it up That's the first man yeah <laughs> stick it in the dude somebody just says his blueies yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're towards the end of this podcast right. now. I just, want, I just want to ask one question here. You just reminded me of something. You said you've obviously kicked off a lot um, in over, well, that must be a lot of times in, the, in a career that spanned over 20 years. It brings me to ask this question Who's kicked off more, you or Abby? <laughs> 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 That's a difficult one because over, like, over the course of 20 years yeah. I've kicked off a lot but well, let's, just... let's, let's figure it out so once once or twice a week yeah over the course of versus obviously she's you know I, I my longevity was was probably more but her her she was more she's more prolific well how often would she kick off a week generally or is it like once every two weeks would you say um twice a day <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be great? Like, let's get Carol Vorderman to do the maths on this. So twice a day over the course of... Well, obviously, it didn't... At the start, it didn't happen, did it? You know, oh, that's true. The honeymoon period. So we're averaging so... <laughs> out... So you want to average out over a 20-year period. So we've been together... Uh, we married 12... 
uh, together almost 20, almost. Yes, okay. it's, 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 it's almost a similar time. But then obviously you've got to factor in the honeymoon period. Yeah. And yeah, obviously exactly. she's become more prolific as we've got older. And then you've got, say, international breaks. You've got, yeah. um, for both of you actually, for both you and Abby and uh, football, mm. you're not going to kick off as much on an international break, are no. you? No. No, it'll obviously be... It's a bit more chilled, isn't it? You can just go to the bar, that kind of thing. So It's going to be tight. I think what we'll do is, um, let's get someone to do the maths on this. So, Carol Vorderman, probably be number one. And um, Mm -hmm. see if we can get that figured out for you. Uh, Fantastic. Um, All right, I'm just going to finish on a uh, Sandwich 11. Uh, You lot love them, so we're going to do... I'm not idea why it's a Sandwich 11 this week, but it is... um, we love them. Thank you, Andrew, for this. Uh, it's Edwin van der Sarni in goal. Yeah. Uh, yap, spam. <laughs> <laughs> Caesar, as <laughs> Liquetta. Franz Baconbauer. Uh, straight into midfield with Iniesta. <laughs> Scott McTommy K. Uh, Ney Marmalade. Uh, Nicky Butter. Um, Nicky Butty yeah. as well Nicky that works Butty, that yeah. works yeah straight to Mo Salad uh, Me Tuna uh, and Shola <laughs> Me Tuna <laughs> Me Tuna's a bit like reminds me of Ali G that one <laughs> the Julie wasn't it yeah Me Tuna uh, Shola Hamiobi uh, manager Chris Stark yeah love nice. that manager my one issue here is um, there's no Steve Sidwell in it. <laughs> uh, and I, I, for some reason I feel like there always needs to be one in there there's like a CD bread I guess <laughs> Steve seeded well seeded Steve seed well yeah S- Steve seeded bun seeded <laughs> St- sesame seeded sesame seed seasoned well yes <laughs> <laughs> great well done right, fantastic Right, well, thanks for today, guys. Uh, remember, I can't wait for next week. Eric Cantona is going to be absolutely unreal. Mm-hmm. Um, and Liam Pitchford, get behind him. Yeah, get behind Liam Pitchford. And please, can we track down this bus driver as well? Uh, we need mm. to find him. Brilliant. Back stronger next week. Bye.